In the south of Denmark, a mega project is underway to build a tunnel under the Baltic linking the country to Germany. At first glance, it just looks like sand. But beneath the calm surface of the Baltic Sea, something massive is happening. Germany and Denmark are digging relentlessly, moving millions of tons of seabed without making a sound in the headlines. It's quiet, almost secretive, and far bigger than anyone expected. Some say it's just a tunnel. Others say it's a blueprint for the future of Europe. But once you understand the scale and purpose behind this digging, you'll realize it's not just engineering, it's transformation. And it's happening right now. The secret below the surface. Not all revolutions arrive with a bang. Some come in silence, buried under meters of water and soil. That's exactly what's unfolding between Germany and Denmark, where two nations are quietly carving out a new future beneath the Baltic Sea. While much of the world obsesses over flashy megaprojects and architectural marvels, this one has slipped almost unnoticed beneath the radar. But if you trace the outlines of this massive undertaking, you'll see that it's not just a construction site. It's a new era of Europe European connectivity in the making. At the center of it all is the Fermanbelt Belt Fixed Link, an ambitious engineering marvel that will soon connect the Danish island of Lolland with the German island of Feman. Stretching over 17 kilometers in length, this submerged passageway will carry both vehicles and trains across the Baltic Sea, creating a high-speed route between Scandinavia and Central Europe. Once complete, it will become the longest immersed tunnel in the world, overtaking even the famous Channel Tunnel that links the UK to France. The project may sound simple, just dig, build and connect, but what's happening beneath the water is anything but ordinary. This is no small trench. Workers are excavating millions of cubic meters of earth with millimeter level precision, carving out a trench wide enough to cradle floating tunnel segments longer than a football field. Each one is made of concrete so dense it weighs thousands of tons. These segments aren't placed on top of the seabed, they are carefully positioned within it, one after another, like a giant underwater puzzle that must fit perfectly. It's not just the size of the tunnel that makes it revolutionary, it's how silently and efficiently it's being built. While much of Europe is caught in political gridlock over infrastructure upgrades, Germany and Denmark have managed to launch and execute one of the largest civil engineering projects in the continent history with minimal fanfare. Quiet diplomacy, relentless planning, and years of environmental studies paved the way for this dig. And now, while few are watching, the work is accelerating. But the real question is not just how the tunnel is being built, it's why. Why go to such lengths for a link that already has ferry routes in place? Why spend billions of euros to dig through the seabed when a bridge or upgraded ferry service might suffice? The answer it turns out, is about far more than convenience. This tunnel represents a new vision for trade, climate action, and future transportation in a continent facing rising demand, shifting economies, and mounting environmental pressures. To understand why Germany is moving so much sand, and what they plan to do with it, we have to go deeper. Because the true marvel isn't just the tunnel itself, it's the operation beneath the surface and the staggering amount of earth that needs to disappear to make this vision possible. But if the tunnel itself is this massive, just how much earth has to be moved to make it possible? The monster dig they don't talk about. Before a single tunnel segment could be placed, before the concrete was poured or the steel was forged, the first task was to make space. Not just a little room, an entire underwater corridor carved through the Baltic seabed. That meant digging, and not just a trench or a channel, but one of the largest excavation operations in European history. What Germany and Denmark are doing is not construction in the traditional sense. It is a full-scale reshaping of the ocean floor, and it's being executed with a level of precision that borders on surreal. At the heart of this massive effort is the dredging operation. It's what allows the rest of the tunnel to even exist. More than 19 million cubic meters of materialism and clay, silt and glacial deposits must be removed to create a path for the tunnel to settle into. This isn't a side task. It's the foundation of everything. And if even one layer is miscalculated, the entire structure could be compromised. That's why marine engineers are treating this not like digging, but like sculpting. Every centimeter matters 
sensors. Every movement is tracked. Every grain of sand has a purpose. The trench they're cutting stretches across 18 kilometers of seabed. It's up to 16 meters deep and 60 meters wide. Imagine slicing a canyon into the bottom of the sea without disturbing what lives around it. That's what these crews are doing. And they're doing it largely out of view, with little media attention and even less public awareness. Most people don't even realize it's happening because there's nothing flashy about it. No tall cranes or dramatic concrete pours, just a silent fleet of specialized vessels floating along the Baltic, working night and day like a ghost operation. The machines they use are engineering marvels in their own right. Trailing suction hopper dredgers, or TSHDs, glide across the water, dragging enormous suction heads that vacuum up layers of sediment like underwater harvesters. These dredgers are equipped with sonar and GPS systems so advanced they can maintain their path within a margin of error smaller than a football. On board, massive hoppers store the collected material until it's time to offload it for reuse. Then there are the grab dredgers, floating cranes armed with heavy-duty buckets capable of tearing through ancient glacial till. These machines are the brutes of the operation, used when softer methods fail. And for the tightest corners and toughest sections, backhoe dredgers are deployed, reaching down like massive underwater arms to claw away the last stubborn bits of seabed. Together, this machinery forms a coordinated ballet of industrial force. Every movement is scheduled, every load calculated, and every cubic meter accounted for. Because even a single deviation could throw off the slope of the trench, which must remain perfectly level to allow the tunnel elements to lock into place. There's no room for guesswork, no margin for improvisation. That's why engineers monitor the work with real-time data, constantly adjusting based on feedback from underwater sensors, drones, and satellite imaging. But the sheer scale is what stuns most observers. 19 million cubic meters of Earth is not a number that means much on paper, but imagine filling 10 football stadiums to the brim with sand, then multiplying that by 20. That's the amount being moved just to make room for the tunnel, and none of it is discarded. This isn't a project that just dumps its waste into the ocean. Instead, the removed material is being reused with almost surgical foresight. Coastal protection zones are being rebuilt. New dunes are rising where there were none. In some places, entire new land masses are being formed from the dredged soil, reshaping the coastlines of Germany and Denmark with material that was buried under the sea just months before. This is called circular construction. Nothing wasted, everything repurposed. The same sand that once lay at the bottom of the Baltic is now becoming part of nature preserves, infrastructure platforms, and flood defenses. Engineers are even using the material to raise land around the tunnel portals, providing both protection and aesthetic integration with the surrounding landscape. It's a strategy that's as environmentally thoughtful as it is technically brilliant. Still, it hasn't been without complications. Marine biologists raised concerns early on about the impact on local wildlife. The Baltic Sea, while shallow, is home to a fragile ecosystem that includes rare species, like the harbour porpoise. Dredging, if handled poorly, could cloud the water, disrupt breeding cycles, and destroy habitat. To address this, dredging is paused during key breeding seasons. Sediment plumes are carefully monitored with underwater cameras and satellite data. Acoustic barriers have even been tested to reduce the impact of noise on sensitive species. It's not just a tunnel anymore, it's an environmental balancing act. The deeper meaning behind this silent excavation becomes clearer the longer you look at it. This isn't just about a tunnel, it's about what it takes to fundamentally change how a continent moves. The act of digging here is not destructive, it is creative. It is the deliberate construction of a new artery for Europe, a route that connects nations, reduces emissions, and outpaces the limitations of the past. But there's still more to understand, because once the trench is dug and the sand is moved, the real magic begins. That's when the tunnel itself starts to take shape, not just as an idea, but as a physical object rising from the sea. And the way that tunnel is built, section by section, like a giant puzzle beneath the water, might be the most impressive part of this entire project. Now that we've seen the scale of the dredging, how do you actually build a tunnel that long under the sea? Building a tunnel the world has never seen before.
Most people imagine tunnels as deep bores drilled through solid rock, cut by massive, boring machines, grinding their way forward inch by inch. But that method doesn't work so well beneath a shallow sea. The geology of the Baltic is too soft, too variable, and the risk of collapse is too high. So, instead, Germany and Denmark turned to a method that's both elegant and audacious, the immersed tube tunnel. It's not new, but the scale and ambition of this particular build have never been attempted before, not anywhere on Earth. The concept behind immersed tube tunnels is deceptively simple. You construct enormous concrete tunnel segments on land, float them out into position, sink them into a trench on the sea floor, and then connect them end to end with extreme precision. It sounds straightforward, until you consider the size of each piece. The Fermanbelt Belt Tunnel requires 89 individual segments. Each one measures over 200 meters in length, about as long as two football fields laid back to back, and weighs over 70,000 tons. These are not manageable chunks. These are floating fortresses made of steel and concrete. To even make such massive pieces possible, a special factory was built along the Danish coast. It stretches over one kilometer and is one of the largest construction facilities in Europe. Within this compound, the tunnel segments are being molded with high-performance concrete, reinforced with thousands of tons of steel. Every inch is monitored, every material is tested, and when each segment is finished, it's not wheeled out like a brick, it's launched, floated out into the sea, using a system of ballast tanks and tugboats that slowly guide it to the prepared trench where it's then sunk with millimeter-level precision. The process is tense, complicated, and relentless. One wrong angle, one unexpected current, and the alignment could fail. So the engineering teams rely on GPS, sonar, and underwater laser guidance to fit each segment together like pieces of a giant Lego set. Except these blocks weigh more than warships, Divers, crane operators, and navigation specialists all work together in shifts that blur the line between construction and choreography. This is not brute force engineering. This is finesse at the bottom of the sea. As each new piece is added, the tunnel slowly stretches its way across the Baltic, connecting Denmark to Germany one segment at a time. Inside each tunnel segment, crews are already installing the infrastructure that will carry cars and trains across the border four lanes of highway and two railway tracks are being built into the same structure, one above the other, separated by massive concrete dividers and equipped with the latest ventilation and emergency systems. It's not just a tunnel, it's a multi-lane transport corridor embedded in concrete, wrapped in waterproofing and sunk beneath the waves like a futuristic artery. What's even more impressive is how fast it's coming together. In an era when many infrastructure projects are delayed by red tape, lawsuits, or poor planning, the Ferman Belt Tunnel has moved from paper to reality in record time. After years of planning and legal wrangling, the actual construction only began in 2020. Yet, just a few years later, the digging is nearly done. The first tunnel segments are in place, and workers are ahead of schedule in multiple sectors of the project. That kind of speed is rare, especially for a build that crosses national borders, involves sensitive marine environments, and requires constant coordination between two governments. And let's not forget the cost. Seven billion euros is no small price tag. But the countries involved aren't just paying for speed or prestige. They're paying for reliability. The ferry route currently in place is slow often delayed by weather, and can only handle so much cargo at a time. The tunnel promises something completely different. It offers a permanent all-weather link that cuts crossing time from 45 minutes to just 10 for cars, or 7 for high-speed trains. That's not just a convenience for travelers. It's a complete transformation of how goods, services, and people flow across the European continent. That efficiency is exactly what makes this project so powerful. It's not just a shortcut, it's a game-changer. For truckers moving cargo from Scandinavia to Italy, the tunnel removes an entire layer of logistical friction. For commuters and tourists, it opens up faster, greener and more reliable options. And for climate strategists, it marks a turning point. Every train that crosses that tunnel, instead of a diesel truck on a ferry, saves fuel, cuts emissions, 
and helps move Europe one step closer to carbon neutrality. But even with all that progress, challenges remain. The Baltic is not always cooperative. Storms, sediment and marine activity continue to test the crews working day and night beneath the water. Each segment must not only be placed carefully, but also sealed properly to prevent leaks, shifting or future structural strain. It's a long-term investment, not just in infrastructure, but in trust. The trust that this tunnel will last for decades, perhaps even centuries, without failure. That's why every decision is measured, every calculation is double-checked, and every segment that disappears beneath the surface carries the weight of years of work, thousands of hands, and a future full of promise. Because what Germany and Denmark are building is not just a tunnel, it's a foundation, an invisible bridge made of concrete and conviction. And yet, for all its impressive details, this structure is still just one piece of the puzzle. What really sets this project apart is not the tunnel itself, but the scale of its impact. The economic consequences, the environmental benefits, and the ripple effects across the region are far bigger than the trench it sits in. That's where we go next. Because this tunnel may start in Denmark and end in Germany, but its influence stretches far beyond both. With the construction well underway, how will this single tunnel reshape travel, trade, and entire regions across Europe? Beyond the Tunnel The Fehmarn Belt Tunnel isn't just a new shortcut, it's a shift in how Europe thinks about connection. In the past, crossing a border often meant waiting for ferries, navigating toll booths, or finding alternate routes based on weather. With this tunnel, all of that changes. The journey between Denmark and Germany will become nearly seamless. For tourists, it means faster holidays. For businesses, it means lower costs and tighter supply chains. For everyone, it signals a future where borders are easier to cross and where mobility feels effortless. But the ripple effect goes further. The tunnel sits on a key link in the Trans-European Transport Network, a system that stretches across the continent, from northern Scandinavia to southern Italy. By removing the ferry bottleneck, the tunnel opens up this entire route. Trains loaded with freight will now travel faster and more efficiently. Instead of idling at ports or rerouting through slower paths, goods will move in a straight line across Europe, dramatically improving trade flows. That kind of movement reshapes economies. Regions that were once considered peripheral now become central. Small towns on either side of the tunnel are already preparing for more tourists, more commerce, and more opportunity. New hotels are going up, restaurants are expanding, and governments are investing in roads and rail lines to connect to the new artery. A few years ago, places like Rødbyhav or Puttgarden were seen as sleepy border towns. Now, they're on the verge of becoming major hubs. There's also a powerful environmental angle. Every year, millions of vehicles cross the Baltic by ferry, burning fossil fuels and releasing carbon into the air. By moving that traffic into the tunnel, the carbon footprint drops sharply. The European Union has made climate commitments that require dramatic shifts in transportation. This tunnel delivers exactly that. It's not just convenient. It's cleaner, faster and more sustainable. Even so, critics argue about the cost. 7 billion euros is a massive investment. Some say it could take decades before the tolls and trade benefits pay it back. Others point to the risks to marine life or the chance of unforeseen maintenance costs. But despite these concerns, the momentum behind the project hasn't slowed. Construction is moving forward, public support is strong, and more countries are watching closely wondering if this kind of project is possible in their own waters. That's the legacy of the Fehmarn Belt Tunnel. It's not just a path from point A to point B. It's proof that countries can work together, overcome natural challenges, and build something that changes how an entire region functions. What began as a quiet dredging operation in a shallow sea is becoming one of the most transformative infrastructure projects in the world. Looking at the Fermán Belt Tunnel, it's easy to miss the full scale of what's happening beneath the waves. This isn't just about connecting Denmark and Germany. It's about setting a new standard for how we move, build, and live. 
A tunnel like this challenges every old assumption about borders, trade, and engineering. It proves that with enough willpower and precision, we can literally reshape the Earth to suit a better future. If this is what's happening in the quiet corners of the Baltic, what else might be changing while we're not looking? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more wild stories from the edge of human innovation.